Titus, Titus lieber Luther, <lacht> lieber Felix, vielen Dank für die Einladung. Ich freue mich immer wieder, hier zu sein. Äh, mein Thema war Lift, Heart and the Brosche, Echocardiography with Size Enough. I would like to speak about this aspect concerning evaluation or assessment of myocardial function in patients with left ventricular pressure overload. And we have now not only the conventional echocardiography, including ejection fraction and inflow and outflow patterns, but we have also new methods and uh, we have to use it and to evaluate it in our patients, in pediatric patients, such as tissue doubler imaging, 2D strain speckle tracking, and the newly developed three echocardiography and 3D strain. And which value have these methods in detection of not only myocardial, global myocardial function, but of latent myocardial function and the value of stress echocardiography. So you know all of these uh, tools to evaluate the morphology, the morphology and function of the aortic valve and the left ventricular obs uh, obstruction outflow. And it depends on the function. And uh, Professor Lange, uh, when we discussed, when we always discussed the morphology of the aortic valve, bicuspid, unicuspid, and uh, maximum and mean systolic gradient, he was always not interested in this discussion, and uh, he used to say, was macht die Kammer? Was macht die Kammerfunktion? Es kommt doch immer auf die Kammerfunktion an. I think he is right, because uh, it depends on the ventricular function, and also the consequences of pressure overload, and the most and the first consequences of pressure overload is hypertrophy. And hypertrophy is always overlooked and always not quantitatively assessed. And it is always related to pressure overload rather than a volume overload. And in adult patients, we have follow-up studies showing that ventricular or hypertrophy have a serious cardiac consequences and fatal events in those patients with significant hypertrophy and pressure overload. And you know these uh, conventional methods to evaluate uh, the ventricular mass, and there is different method to use uh, to assess that, and there's no normal values. And we know that uh, the ventricular hypertrophy is remodeled or uh, improved after uh, operation of, uh, as example, of uh, aortic valve stenosis. And we know that also in small infants, these patients still have altered systolic and diastolic function, uh, such as uh, uh, isovolumic contraction and relaxation time and the bio myocardial index in comparison to normal infants. So which information provide these new methods, such as tissue doubler imaging, this is the first study or paper describing these methods from McDicken and Sutherland, and they look at uh, the data which has not been considered by the uh, conventional doubler, the movement of myocardial motions. And from these parameters, we can calculate the velocities the deformation and the systolic and diastolic wall motions and also important uh, uh, time intervals. But the most interesting parameter is deformation. It is correlated and it is related to myocardial contraction. You see here this bulk is moving normally and have normal velocities, but this bulk is contracting and deforming thickening and shortening, and, but this, uh, this uh, bulk not. And this is what we call deformation or strain. I prefer to say deformation, not strain. And uh, you see that this bulk is deforming 25%. Uh, Every normal walls have a deformation of nearly 20%. This is a normal deformation. 
And the deformation rate is, is easily the deformation per second. This, def this bulk is deformed, excuse me, twice than this bulk, and it has higher strain rate or deformation rate. But we know that the ventricular wall is deformed not only in longitudinal direction, but also in three direction. Is this, we have a longitudinal deformation, we have a radial deformation, and we have circumferential deformation. And this deformation has to be also considered. There is an uh, increasing body now of literature concerning the validation, normal values of these uh, parameters in adults, uh, also in children. And so this is not the matter. And uh, also the assessment or comparing this method to conventional, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, to conventional uh, and other methods in uh, clinical and also experimental settings. But do these methods provide information which can not be detected using the conventional echocardiography? So this is uh, according to uh, reports. I have to uh, show you that this is the case. And this is uh, a very nice uh, study done in London, in a Katsoulis uh, working groups, showing that uh, the uh, strain, strain rate are significantly reduced in patients with aortic stenosis and patients with coarctation. This literature, I, have, I want to show you, all of these patients have normal ejection fraction, a normal conventional uh, parameter, systolic parameters. So, and you see that the patients with aortic stenosis, they have more pronounced alteration uh, in myocardial or the wall motions and uh, deformation uh, rather than the patient with, uh, with the coarctation. Thus, these longitudinal motion and deformations were significantly lower in patients with uh, left ventricular pressure overload and preserved ejection fraction. And also, in adult patients, those uh, patients with arterial hypertension, they have the normal ejection fraction but they have significantly reduced global deformation. And uh, this is also, again, the case. The patients have normal ejection fraction. And this is also a very interesting paper done in uh, 2002, or published in circulation 2002, uh, in rats, where they uh, have done an aortic bending. And uh, another group of rats, they underwent physical exercise. And both groups, they have ventricular hypertrophy, and um, they underwent examination by tissue Doppler and also histological assessment. And you see that those patients with non-physiological hypertrophy, so such as, as aortic bending, they have significantly reduced strain, strain rate, and all of these parameters. And uh, they have all of these uh, rats, they have normal ejection fraction. And when they also examine the hearts, these patients or these rats have uh, increasing amount of collagen and fibrosis. And this is also in, in a good study done in athletes and also in patients with arterial hypertension, and they also uh, uh, we are able to uh, show that patients with uh, arterial hypertension have uh, significantly more uh, um, altered regional function, although these patients have a hypertrophy. This is very important uh, uh, for uh, decision making uh, if we want to uh, delay the intervention uh, when when is waiting is uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so also Professor Lang have used to say was when he speak with uh, mothers and parents was bringt das Warten auf was warten wir und uh, das ist glaube ich das Problem dass wir manchmal uh, <laughs> 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 We don't know what exactly 
uh, the uh, alteration in the myocardial function uh, to do the intervention. So it is these methods help us to show latent uh, myocardial uh, alteration. This is, will be uh, very interesting. And this is uh, all of these experience with, uh, um, with these uh, parameters are in adult patients with the coronary heart disease. And one of these aspects is post-systolic shortening. This is simply post-systolic contraction after the aortic closure. Normal, uh, normally, you have the maximal deformation uh, by the aortic valve uh, closed. But sometimes you see here that some patients have post uh, uh, contraction after the aortic valve, which we call post systolic thickening. So, um, this is a very important uh, observation which correlated and related to myocardial fibrosis. And particularly, the tissue double imaging provide, or, uh, provide this information in myocardial function. And in other aspects which help for uh, decision making is to look at this patient and their physical exercise. All of these parameters we have done, we perform, are at rest. And this is my critic for also uh, establishment of guidelines. I think in, in our pediatric patients, patient congenital heart disease, we have to look also at the gradient, also at the function and the physical stress. And this is in our department, we have uh, this exercise testing beside the echo machine. And we now using these methods and evaluating also in, uh, within uh, some prospective studies. And I show you some of these uh, examples, as example, this patient with, uh, uh, with aortic stenosis. And he have uh, completely uh, no problem, no clinical symptoms, and we put him on the exercise testing, and so you see that first the reduction of the deformation, and you see also post systolic thickening, and uh, also an increase in the uh, uh, maximal systolic gradient. And you see also uh, concerning the radial deformation, there is paradoxical movement or deformation in the myocardium. So we have to evaluate this is in, a, in a number of patients, and uh, maybe we can uh, report more on this study if, when it's completed. So concerning speckle tracking, this is also new methods based on completely different physical principle. So you have simply a very simple tracking of the myocardium, and you can measure the deformation velocities. And it's very easy to perform. Uh, this is the advantage of these uh, methods, but have low frame rate. As example, to evaluate post-systolic thickening, it's better to do that by tissue imaging because you have much more uh, frame rate in that <coughs> method. And this is also a nice study comparing the uh, the, um, the methods between expertise, uh, experts doing more than 200 analysis and beginner doing lower than 10 analysis. And you see there is a very good correlation and uh, very good also inter and intra uh, observer reliability. As the methods is very easy to perform and uh, uh, there is also a lot of uh, comparison studies uh, comparing these methods to other uh, also methods, imaging methods. And we also do uh, a st prospective study in uh, our department in uh, patients. We do primarily aortic valve reconstruction because Professor Schiffer's is, uh, his hobby is aortic valve reconstruction. And uh, we look at the myocardial function in these patients uh, before and uh, 12 months after. Uh, and similar also to observation in adult patients, the hypertrophy, it needs time to recover. So this is also in children. You see here the uh, patient with aortic stenosis, they need more than six months to recover from this hypertrophy. And you see here also early change in myocardial velocities. I think this change is, is related to the 
heart lung machine and to operation. And we see also here the difference between aortic valve, regurgitating aortic stenosis. They have the, the, the children with aortic valve uh, regurgitation, they have more diastolic alteration in the function. And this is also an experimental study showing that global strain is more sensitive as showing the alteration very early rather than other deformations in aortic bending. And um, these also these studies uh, showing the, ra uh, the rapid improvement to myocardial function in those patients receiving aortic valve replacement by TAVI. This is all adult groups, and this is also published now. Very interesting study showing that global strain have also very good predictive value concerning cardiac event and survival in adult patients. And uh, in stepwise Cox model, global strain was the sole independent predictor. So measuring assessment of myocardial function, these patients are very important, they have prognostic value. But we need also such data in our patients, in our pediatric patients, we have such data yet, not yet. So concerning 3D, it is better to have, of course, a th to look in the three-dimensional and to look in all directions. And now the method is established. I can say the method is really for the left ventricle is very good established. I can say that measuring the ventricular, left ventricular volumes and ejection fraction by 3 is completely comparable to MRI, and there is a lot of studies comparing these methods. And you can also compare the regional volume change in these patients. This is a normal value. And also in right, for the right ventricle, of course, there is limitation concerning the acquisition of the data. Uh, I can say maybe 60% of the patients, they 3D of right ventricle is applicable. And you can get this information in diastolic volume, systolic volume, left ventricular mass, ejection fraction, stroke volume, and also 3D strain. In my opinion, this will be more superior than the longitudinal and one-dimensional strain. And a new uh, tool is the area strain. This is area strain comparing as looking at the change, procentual change in the definitive area in the endocardium. And this is, I think it's a very promising method, a uh, tool, but we have to evaluate also this tool and these parameters uh, using other studies. Let's show you some uh, also uh, examples uh, containing 3D strain. You see here that this is one patient with uh, aortic valve stenosis. He has his young patients. He has normal radial and circumferential and flesh and strain or area strain, but reduced longitudinal strain. Longitudinal strain still an early parameter providing information on function. And you see here the change. We are now repeating this uh, study, looking at the patient or pediatric patients before and after surgery. And you see what we have seen, that we have persistent reduction in the myocardial function. I think this is, uh, these patients still have need more time to recover. All of these patients, they have normal ejection fraction. And this is also concerning the uh, uh, longitudinal strain and air strain they have reduction of these parameters after surgery. So I can conclude that the conventional echo for orientation, for uh, screening the patients, uh, maximal gradient, mean gradient, morphology of the aortic valve is very helpful. Tissue Doppler imaging and 2D strain, derived strain values, provide more information which is not detectable by the conventional echocardiography. Post-systolic shortening, which is providing information in scars and fibrosis, is very promising methods. But I have also to say that 
we didn't detect it in pediatric patients. Maybe the pediatric patients still have more capabilities to adapt and to remodel. And 3D echo is, we have to evaluate these methods using more studies. And abnormal myocardial function of serious stress should be done in our patients. We have sometimes uh, maximum gradient of 50, as according to results, to the guidelines, there is no need for intervention. But if you put these patients uh, on exercise testing, you have sometimes an, 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 an increase of mean gradient to 50 or 60 millimeter mercury. So the question was for me, lift heart under pressure, precise enough, echocardiography precise enough. I would say, yes, it is helpful if it's performed precisely enough. And this is, uh, this is the problem. I think also it, it, when you do a action fraction, you have also variation of 20%. So uh, we, uh, pediatric cardiologists, we don't uh, do the echo precise enough. So I can just say so, uh, a lot of pediatric cardiologists and why in my department also. And uh, concerning the discussion of which methods is, uh, or which aspect is better than the other, I think the discussion will continue even in the heavens, so as you see here. Thank you very much.